Welcome to Grace Bible Fellowship. To all of our online friends, join us as we worship Jesus Christ together. Invite your friends. Welcome to Grace Bible Fellowship. To all of our online friends, join us as we worship Jesus Christ together. Invite your friends. Thank you for being here. God encourage you, strengthen you, bless you. I guess it's okay. I don't. I, I don't hear myself right this morning. Put it down. I'm up too high. Okay. Is that any better? Can you hear me still? Can you all hear me still? I. <clears throat> I, I love uh, electronics.
because you never know what they're going to do. It always makes life interesting. They work one day and the next day, you got it all fixed, and the next day they don't, they don't even do it. So. <laughs> hey, God blessings on you. I'm glad you're here. May the Lord encourage you and strengthen you. Uh, I, uh, before we start singing, I, I want to say I'm thankful that you chose to be at Grace this morning. And I want to thank you for praying with me and for me and for those four special needs that I have in a bulletin and put on the overhead. Keep praying. Lord, give us souls. Labor's in the harvest field. And thank God for every one of you that are. I mean, it's just that there's so many opportunities for Jesus. Number three, please, Lord, this is your place. And number five, four, Lord, pour out your spirit because that's what God has promised. And we need the Lord's special help in a very special way. And I thank you again for supporting and helping us to reach the, un, the less fortunate is what uh, Woody calls it on his, on hands of hope trucks. He said, reaching the less fortunate. That's pretty good, isn't it? All right. And then thank you for seeing opportunities to do for Jesus and doing it. A lot of folks will say, well, why isn't that done? Well, I'm glad you aren't that way. I'm glad you're helping me pick up and keep on going. And I really deeply appreciate it. And I want to encourage you, be not weary in well-doing, for in due season we'll reap if we faint not. And I want to give you a little story. It happened back in 1855. Anybody alive back then? <laughs> no, you weren't, Norma. And you weren't either, Mark. But anyway, there was a guy... It was, called, it was called a coal porter. Do you know what a coal porter is? Anybody know what that is? Well, Norma, you were alive back then. Why wouldn't you know that? A coal porter. See? Oh, okay. <laughs> a coal porter was a guy that gave books, sold books, help books. And he was uh, out where the train was that was taking troops into a war zone. And he was handing out little testaments and he offered the testament to a soldier, asked what book it might be. And he said, the word of God. And so the guy said, let me have it then, said the man. And when he received it, he added laughingly, now it will do very well to light my pipe. Well, the old bookseller was sorry he'd so bestowed the treasure. But he said to himself, well, as I have given it, it must go. Well, just a little bit later, in, the March, in March of 1856, he found himself over in the center of France, and he sought lodging at an inn, and he found the people who kept it in great distress, having lost their son. The poor mother explained that her son had gone into that war zone and returned, though only to die of his wounds. But she said, I have such consolation. He was so peaceful and happy. He brought comfort to me and his father. And the old cold porter asked, how was that? Oh, she said, he found all his comfort in one little book which he had always with him. And the cold porter begged to see the book and they brought him a copy of the New Testament of which the first 15 or 20 pages had been torn out. But on the inside cover it was written, received at Toulon, and the date when the coal porter gave it to him, despised, neglected, read, believed, and found salvation. <laughs> Isn't that something else? In the place and the date were recognized by the old court porter, and thus he reaped the seed he had sown. Be not weary, y'all. And yesterday, you know, you run out of toilet paper in your home, do you? So I was at, uh, I was helping Mark, and I went by and picked up two of those big old rolls, you know, those big bundles of it, at, at Sam's. I came back and the ladies were still meeting in here and I was trying to make sure everything was okay so I set them inside the door, ran in here, got everything and came back and in less than 15 minutes or later, they were gone. And I thought, well, maybe Jennifer or Sean or somebody got them. So I thought I'd look on the camera right quick. Well, the car van pulled up out there in the driveway. And I thought, oh, dear Lord. 
And here he walked in and looked at that, the toilet tissues inside the door. And he went down and went through all the bottom of the church and came back and looking in everything and went back out, moved his van and came back in, picked up those two bundles of toilet tissue. <laughs> Walked out and put them in his van. Came back in and I had a, one of those portable air tanks, you know, was about that big one. Picked it up, put it in his van. Well, what an opportunity for us to pray. I just read you the story. And I prayed, Lord, please use that to get to that young man. Help us to find him. I am uh, looking through, you know, seeing it all. And I couldn't read the license tag, so I couldn't do anything about it. But, Lord, you're greater than all that. Can you see? God gives us opportunities to do for him, even in the midst of trials and troubles. Can you see that? And that's what God wants us to do. Look beyond all of that. Not fuss and gripe and complain. Now, Lord, the guy probably needs to be in jail. Well, that's the truth. But I'll tell you what, he needs more than jail. He needs heaven. He needs God, and that's what we're after. So that's why I said, keep him praying with me. Lord, give us souls. Lord, give us laborers in the harvest field. Lord, this is your place. No room for the devil. <laughs> he walked in yesterday. <laughs> Number four, Lord, pour out your spirit. Are y'all willing to pull with me on that? And everybody said, amen. 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 <laughs> Stand with me. Let's pray together. I didn't say that to encourage you, to discourage you. I said that to encourage you to pray. And Heavenly Father, we bring all of this to you and thank you that we have the opportunity to try to touch people. And Lord, we don't like for folks to steal stuff. It's against your rule, against your will. But Lord, use this to touch that precious man and bring him to yourself. Lord, there's nothing too hard for you. We ask of you for divine intervention, Lord. Do it in Jesus' name. For Lord, we pray that everybody who comes through this place will be touched by your spirit. And Lord, let there be more and more labors to glorify your precious name. Folks with a passion and a dedication, a complete consecration to glorify you, Lord. We ask in the precious name of Jesus. And everybody said amen. amen. How about praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. How about hallelujah? All right, what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. What more? Oh, 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 what a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Can you go one more? What? Oh, what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad we have a God like that? Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Let your love flow through me. Let your love flow through me. Make me a blessing, Lord, wherever I may be. Oh, keep me pure, keep me clean, so that your love may be seen. Let your love. Let your love flow through me. Oh, let your love flow through me. Let your love flow through me. Make me a blessing, Lord, wherever I may be. Peace.
Father, thank you for this morning that we can gather together and uh, sing praises to you, to worship you together. Thank you for everyone that's here, Lord. We love you, we worship you, and we just commit this time to you, Lord. Help us to forget about the daily plans that we have for dinner, the afternoon things that we got going on. Help us to concentrate on you today for the next hour, and Lord, just make this a Great time of blessing. Yes. We love you in Jesus' name. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. All right, pick up that song we left out, Evan. When I look into your holiness. When I look into your holiness. When I gaze into your love. When all things that surround become shadows in the light of you. When I found the joy of reaching your heart. When my will becomes enthroned in your love. When all things that surround become shadows in the light of you. I worship you. I worship you. The reason I live is to worship I worship you, I worship you, the reason that I live is to worship Amen. Just go down to, to God be the glory, all right? Thank you. To God be the glory, great things he has done. So loved he the world that he gave us his son. Who yielded his life and atonement for sin. And open the light gate that all may go in. So praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the earth hear him. 
that we fall, we rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give Him the glory. Great things He has done. Great things He has taught. I'll rejoice. rejoice Hallelujah. Through Jesus the Son, who yielded his life, life the tone will be our one when the life's gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let the earth And you may be seated. And Lord's going to bring a song to us that I love. He gives more grace. And the reason I'm trying to do a little bit this different today, I, uh, I want to preach to you from the thought of the incomparable Christ. Have anybody ever heard that poem, those things, those good things? Well, I'll bring it to you this morning, the Lord willing. Laura, bring, he gives more grace to us. Sorry. <laughs> Can you read that one? Yeah. Right. <laughs> he giveth more grace when the burdens grow greater. He sendeth more strength when the labors increase. To added affliction, he has. Thank you, Lord. For Amen. Of his infinite riches in Jesus. Praise the Lord. He giveth and giveth and giveth again. When we have exhausted our shelter. Our strength has failed when the day is half done. Yes. When he reaches the end of our hoarded resources, our Father's full giving is only begun. Amen. Tell you what, let's sing that with you, with you the last chorus again, all right? His love has no limit, his grace has no measure, his power has no boundaries, no
How about how great thou art, Evan? Amen. Thank you, Laura. Praise the Lord. It's right there on the list, right on the list, right there. There you go. Oh, Lord, Lord my God, God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the words I have I see the stars, I hear the mighty thunder, my power to last, the universe is sway. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. Hallelujah. Amen. How great thou art. How great thou art, and sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art, and when I think that God, think of it, y'all. Sin is in the dark, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross my burden gladly buried, he bled and died to take away my sin. My soul, my Savior God, to me, how great thou art, oh, that it grab us, how great oh, thou art, yes. then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art, when Christ shall come, amen, with shout, hallelujah, amen, what day behold, what joy shall fill my heart. Then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim, My God, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God. How great thou art, how great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art. In the bulletin today, I add a little something I just received from my brother-in-law, David Thomas, the, the husband of my sister that died a little over a year ago, but she's alive today. And one of the inter interesting things about this is, y'all, all this is documented and been one year now and one month and Kay's been in for, she already had a whole bunch of other checkups, but she's been for the annual checkup. And the doctor said, you don't need to come for another year. And my sister's awful close to 80 years of age, and she's still doing real well. But she died. And all of that's documented. 
And if you'll look on the little pamphlet I've got inside the, the bulletin today, you'll be able to read the story. When I first told about it, David had not been able to find the little nurse, but there's a picture in there of the nurse after they put Katie back together and, and they had repaired the aorta that had burst. And somewhere or another, she lived through all that. It was 8.45 in the morning. They got it repaired at 8.15 that morning. They, they backed up the ambulance to the door to put her in and the ambulance was stuck. They had to bring another ambulance. Took her to the first hospital and said, we can't help her. Second hospital couldn't help her. The doctor said, David, if she's gonna live, you're gonna to have to fly her to St. Louis. They put her in St. Louis at 8.15. They operated and repaired the aorta. She was doing real well, except in just a little bit, she was bleeding again. So they opened back up and repaired it, put her back together, and her heart stopped. That little nurse was standing right there, and at first David didn't know who the nurse was, but the picture of her right there now. She said, y'all stand back. She took out her clippers and took those staples back in two, cut them back out opened up her chest and put her hand on my sister's heart and massaged it. Well, they thought she was out too long, it'd be something wrong with her head. Of course, she is in, in ICU. They thought she'd be dead, she'd have, have problems with her head. The next day after, second day afterwards, she's responded, wiggling her toes, wiggling her fingers. Third day, she's talking. They thought she'd be in there for five weeks. She's out in five days. Put her in the room. In the, they thought she'd be there for several weeks. I think it was less than a week, maybe eight days, they were putting her in rehab. They thought she'd be there for six weeks. In two weeks, she was home, playing the keyboard. David gave you keep. And it's on Facebook if you'd like to see some of it. She's playing the keyboard. My sister's a good pianist. And I, I thought, man, what a great God we serve. Amen. Right. How could we honor him? All of this is documented. I mean, not just a fairy tale, <laughs> not just something. In fact, the doctor, when she walked in just the other day, he said, there's our miracle lady. There's our miracle lady. My, I believe in God to keep your heart beating. Amen. Got to keep Mike going. Y'all pray for him because his heart's not doing good right now. I'm trusted God. We serve a great God, y'all. Yes, we do. Amen. Melissa, we've got you on the prayer list. It comes up up there. Melissa's going through uh, maybe a lipona. I can't lymphoma. say it. Lymphoma. And uh, pray for her, that sweet little doll that she likes to hear the kids sing. I, uh, I tell y'all, we serve a great God. Yes, we do. Amen. Amen. Lonnie, I want you to come and join me. And we're going to sing, and the team's going to back us up with, Oh, What a Savior. We sang it during the Easter program. Let's see if we can do it. If you'll get the words up there for us, we'll see if we can. Once I was straying in sin's dark valley, no hope within could I see. They searched through heaven and found a Savior to save a poor lost so like me oh what a savior oh hallelujah his heart was broken on calvary his hands were nailed scarred his side He gave his life blood for even me. He left the Father with all his riches. 
kiss with calmness sweeter so came down from heaven and gave his life blood to make the violence sinner clean. Oh, what a Savior! Oh, hallelujah! His heart was broken on Calvary. His hands were I was river, he gave his life blood for even me. Don't sing with us. Death's chilly waters, I'll soon be crossing, his hand will lead me. Join the chorus in that bright city Amen. and sing of there forevermore. Oh, what a Savior! Oh, His hands were nails scarred, his side was withered, he gave his life blood for even me. He gave his life We glad for a savior like that. Amen and amen. One more song, y'all. Amen. Let's see. Uh, hold up just a little bit. I can't remember the name of it. But Great is thy faithfulness. There you go. Great is thy faithfulness. Oh.
I wish all of you could enjoy that. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that has saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I found I was blind. What's his grace that taught my whole heart? Lord, please help us. Please help us, Lord. team a great hand this morning y'all I think they did great thank y'all amen thanks Lonnie for joining us and uh, thank you Phyllis for joining up there we like her we, we, we like her seesaw, her fiddle playing no that's violin playing in it Phyllis <laughs> amen God please come on kids sing with me and I got come on four of you come on come on Judah sing with me bud amen and amen oh come on get over here with me all right. Jesus, I need that song singing for me. Come on. That's it. Come on up here, sing. All right, Judah, come on right here. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Aren't you glad? Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. The B-I-B-L-E. Yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the Word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. Jesus on the inside, working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. Jesus on the inside, working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. Jesus on the inside, he's working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. Oh, what a change in my life. Oh, give these kids a good hand. That was good, kids. You can go to children's church. Thank you, kids. Thank you, thank you. All right. Wow. Beth, keep working on those kids that they'll learn how to sing with us. All right. Thank, thank you, young folks. I tell you, I'm really thrilled for these young people that are with us. 
Amen. And I tell you what, y'all, we're trying our best to find ways that we can make it better and better for all of them. All right. Even if you put the slideshow up, we'll run it and we'll receive the offering at this time, guys. All right. I sure appreciate you all at faithfulness and tithes and offerings. Thank you all so much. The Lord keeps on meeting our need. This week the old four truck went down, but the Lord helped us through. Praise the Lord. Amen. Bless his name. Thank you, Mike. And I mentioned just a while ago, the Lord helped us when the fork truck blew heat. Uh, Come on, hoses on it. What what were they? Hydraulic hoses. And we we got it going. Praise the Lord. Thank God for his mercy. Thank God for all of you that help and support. But I want to thank God for doing all of it, helping us through. I, uh, I, I praise the Lord. At this age, the Lord still keeps me going at it. I've, I was able to tear part of that apart and get it going after the mechanic couldn't come and help us. But thank God. Thank God for his mercy. Praise the Lord. Thank God for you. Thank you for supporting and helping, as I already mentioned this morning. Hey, thank you for coming to Grace. You know, there's a lot of other places to go, but I appreciate you coming here. I appreciate you. And I want to tell you, I'd sure love to have you come on the evening services. I'd love for you. I wish I was a better and better preacher, but I'm trying my best to preach to you the Word of God with all my heart. So, and the reason why is not because of tradition, but because I want you to be able to grow in grace and enjoy the things of God. Oh, how good it is to walk with him. Praise the Lord forever and ever. Hallelujah. Well, thank the Lord for things that are happening and making better. I praise the Lord for that. We've been able to get some stuff cleaned up and going. And uh, if you'll notice in this corner over here in the parking lot, there's a, a new, new wall over there. And thanks to Sean and his helper and... Uh, Emily and Jennifer, we got a lot going and a lot doing. I praise the Lord. Have your Bibles turned with me this morning into John chapter 14. And I told you I'm going to try to finish speaking to you about the in incomparable Christ. The incomparable Christ. When I first looked at that word again, it just flew through my head. The inco incomparable Christ. Can't no one compared to him, but he's... Amen. John chapter 14. Real interesting. Do you, can anybody quote it with me? Can, in the old King James, anybody? If you can, do it quickly, all right? I better look at it. If you got the King James, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are man, many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And where I go you know, and the way you know. And Thomas said, Lord, 
we do not know where you're going. How can we know the way? And here's, here's words that are very important, y'all. Either this is true or Jesus was the greatest bad man that ever walked on the face of the earth. All right? What does it say? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes unto the Father except by me. Y'all, that's powerful, isn't it? Well, it goes on to say, and if you had known me, let's see, <clears throat> if you had known me, you'd know my father also. And from now on, you know him and have seen him. And Philip said, Lord, show us the father, and that's sufficient for us. And Jesus said to him, have I been so long? Have I been with you so long? And yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me? And the words that I speak unto you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does the work. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the sake of the work themselves. And if you want to see God, take a good look at Jesus. And that's what I'm trying to bring to you today. I tell you what, y'all, if you ever see him, I don't mean with your physical eyes. I mean, with the depth of your heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength, you'll never get over it. You'll never get over it. What a mighty God we serve. Oh, God, great is thy faithfulness. How great is our God. Oh, God, our help in ages past. What a God we serve, y'all. Oh, how I love I, 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 Y'all, please don't misunderstand me. I've wept this week. Lord, please, would you let us have a fresh vision of yourself right here at Grace? An outpouring of your spirit with such power that it grips every one of us. That's why I add that fourth request I give to you all the time. Lord, pour out your spirit upon us. I'm not talking about something spooky. I'm not talking about you doing something special. I'm talking about him opening our hearts and our minds and our eyes until we behold the wondrous truth that Jesus Christ is God. And he has revealed to us that God wants to walk among us. He wants to be our dear friend. He wants to be our shepherd. Is he yours? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside, would you let me use it, quiet waters. He restores my soul. And he leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. Because you're with me, Lord. Have you noticed how it changed voices there? I'm walking through the valley of the shadow of death and it changed to talking to Jesus. I fear no evil because you're with me, Lord. Your rod and staff comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil and my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. What a God we serve, y'all. Say it with me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Who's he talking about? You and me. <laughs> That's who he's talking about. For God so loved you. 
I'm glad he loved you, Joe. He looked beyond our faults. He looked beyond our need and saw our needs. He looked beyond how bad or how good we might think we are. <laughs> and he's there to see us through. For God. For God. Oh, what a blessed Savior. The first part of this verses that I've read to you says, let not your heart be troubled. In the NLT it says, don't let your heart be troubled. I have uh, I wanted to put that in there because I'd like for you to think with me just a little bit. God, God wants us to put ourselves into the situation. Don't let yourself go down that road of fear and afraidness. Oh, you say, but I, I can't help it. Well, there it is. I know it. It's, it. Remember it says in the scripture, what time I am afraid, I will trust. It says God is a very present help in time. Fear, trouble. Remember it says that? God knows that's what he said. When we wake up to that fact and realize where we are, he said, don't, don't go on down that road. Don't go on down that road. She will come to help me preach, you think? Thank you, Austin. I, uh, I, I don't want you to go down that road. And God doesn't want you to. He said, don't let your heart be troubled. Why was Jesus saying this? Why was he telling the disciples that? Well, I think you can understand with me. He just told them that he was going to die. He just told them he's going to be crucified. And he knew that they were not catching on to the rest of the story. And in that way it is with us a lot of times. All we hear is a little piece of it. They heard it. Now, Lord, you're not supposed to die. Remember Peter said that? Lord, you're not supposed to do that. You're not supposed to go down that road. But they weren't hearing the rest of the story, and he knew that. So he was saying to them, please, please don't go down that road. Don't be full of fear. Don't, don't let that happen to you. You know, remember, they were really full of fear because <laughs> when Jesus had risen from the dead and appeared to them, he walked through the wall into their presence, and he didn't come through the door. You know why? It was locked. The windows were shut. Why? They were scared they were next. Hey, come on, y'all, it can happen to us. It just comes flowing in and there things begin to... So Jesus said, don't, don't let your heart be troubled. Don't, don't go down that road. And I want to tell you, he tells us that today too. In John chapter 16, verse 33, wonderful, wonderful words to us, y'all. These things I have spoken unto you that in me you might have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. I like that, don't you? I, I, I'm glad that's the kind of God we serve. He said, come on, don't let your heart be troubled. Don't, don't go down that road. Don't, don't let things tear you up. And folks, we're there. Wow. If you happen to be on any of the media on the internet, or if you listen to CNN or one of those, you cannot be helped, be filled with anxiety and fear. I want to tell you, there's a whole bunch of stories coming out that, man, we're at the end, it's going to crash, and it's all over with. <laughs> what a mighty God we serve. So we said, I don't want you fearing. I've got grace for you. I've overcome the world. You don't have to let yourself be in that situation where you're so full of anxiety. <laughs> and now y'all, don't tell me it doesn't happen to you. It happens to me too. I usually go to sleep right away when I go to bed. Bang, I'm gone. Becky will punch me and said, honey, you're snoring. She said, you always snore when you're on your right side. Turn on your left side, I'll quit snoring. I don't know why, but anyway. I woke up. I did not go back to sleep till almost 3 in the morning. Guess what was going through my mind? All the things that I hadn't done, what should have been done. All the places I wish I'd have been better. All the things that need to be caught up. And then I was thinking about every one of you. Lord, please help me. Help me to help all of us to heaven. 
I, I, I don't want you to go to hell, dear ones. I don't want you to be lost in the darkness of night forever and ever. But also, I want you to live for Jesus today. I want you to enjoy walking with God. I want you to know the joy of sins forgiven, the peace the blood washed know. I want you to know God's love flowing in your heart. And I want to tell you all that going through my mind, Lord, please. I can't seem to preach good enough to get folks here on Sunday night. I can't seem to pray good enough. I can't seem to, but Lord, I refuse to give up. <laughs> I'll keep going till I enter in and sit down by the city. Amen. Why? I want to tell you. He has given us exceeding precious promises. First, Second Peter 1 Peter 1.4 God has given to us exceeding great and precious promises that through these, through what? The promises, you may be partaker of the divine nature. God wants to come and live in every one of us to glorify His name. For it's Christ in us that's the hope of glory. Christ in us. And let me tell you something else that thrills me. Not only is Christ in us, we can be in Christ. In fact, there's more written in the New Testament about us being in Christ than there is about Christ being in us. Why? He loves to flow through us and glorify His name. So He said, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, listen, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And folks, that's where we are. We live in a corrupt world today. <laughs> well, <laughs> I called our dear friend last night. I had debated what to do, but finally I, I called Stephanie Judicio who is our personal police officer. <laughs> I've known Stephanie all of her life and her brother John. John's a near captain of the Moline Police Force. So I, uh, I called her and I said, Stephanie, I didn't know if I should call you or not or what I should she. So I told her, oh, she said, man, isn't that horrible stealing from a church? It, you need to think with me, y'all. You don't know what's going to happen. And, and in fact, I'd have to tell you, <laughs> yesterday I stepped out of the door right near the time that we were serving people. You know, I stepped out to go outside there a minute and there was a lady going to take the garden hose with her. <laughs> what am I saying to you? We live in a corrupt world. What are we going to do? Get upset? No, we're going to lean on Jesus Christ that we might love those who are unlovely and glorify his precious name because we're partakers of the divine nature. That's what I want to talk to you about. That Jesus Christ wants to come with that power and might in every one of our lives so we enjoy life. Hey, amen. You say, well, they stole from you. Yeah, but that's not the first time that's happened for sure. And the Bible does say, lay not up for yourselves treasure on earth where moth and rust are corrupt and thieves break through and steal. That was 2,000 years ago when he said that, y'all. And it's still happening. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and thieves don't break through and steal. <laughs> Hallelujah! <laughs> Exceeding great and precious promises for us. John 14, 27, listen. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. What I'm talking about? Promise. Come on, this is a promise. Not as the world gives, I give unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. <laughs> there it is again. Amen. Why? Promises. In John 15, 11, these things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. Amen. Ah. He's promised his peace and joy. Another thing he's promised is his divine love. Boys, you read in 1 John, it's full of it. He said he wants to bestow his love upon us. Fill us with his love. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Well, the next little thought involved in these verses of Scripture, not only let not your heart be troubled, but 
believe in me. Believe in me. So say it again with me, y'all. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And that's, come on, that's you. That's me. God loves each one of us. It's, I, I, I don't think we really realize how much God really does love us. He does look beyond your faults and see your needs. Hey, hey wait a minute. He doesn't, he doesn't gloss over your sin. If you're sinning, it's sin. Isn't that right? I mean, the world may not call it sin, but if he does, it's sin. Amen? I, uh, I've tried to help with people you know, several times that said to me, you know, uh, well, they're, they're really good at heart, yes. I know it, but the Bible says all liars will have their part in the lake of fire. Isn't that right? And that's one of the biggest things we face in this day. Ah, oh, man. Lord, please help you and me not to be liars. Help us to live true. Help us to live right. For God loves us so much, he wants to deliver us out of the darkness, into the glorious light. Amen. In Romans 10, 9, it says, If you confess your sins... With your, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Believe. Amen. Jesus told them in John 6, 29, this is the only work God wants from you. What work is it? Believe in the one he has sent. That's what Jesus would tell us. He, he wants us to believe him. So he walked among us. We have the record of it. You know, it's thrilling how God has proved his word so true. <laughs> wow. I, uh, I listened to uh, Marty uh, down at Crossings where David and Dean go to church in Oklahoma City in his Easter message. And he talked about the greatness of the heavens. The heavens declare the glory of God. He also talked about the wonderful things that have been discovered with archaeology. But he said, those things are good. But he said, I want to tell you the best thing I can do is show you what God done in somebody's heart. And so they ran a video of one of the families in the church that had been lost in the depth of sin, wandering in the darkness of night, and God got to them. And changed their lives completely. In fact, they, they talked about it. We, we just can't believe the difference that God has made in us. Jesus on the inside, working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. I want to tell you, God loves to change us from the path of sin and darkness into the glorious light that he has for us. Amen. What's the work? Believe him. That's what he's after. Believe is more than a mental ascent. It's more than just kind of thinking, I like, you know, I know God came on this earth. I want to tell you, he said, we must believe that he is. Is that right? And that what? He's a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. See, he's got you to put your will into it. Don't be afraid. Put your heart into it. Believe me. And if I believe him, what's going to happen? It's going to change me. It's going to turn me upside down. It's more than just a little common consent in my head. No, no, no. I believe him. I believe he came to save me from my sin. What did he say? Jesus said, I came to seek and save who? Those who are righteous and holy? No. Nope. And there's none of us there. We may think we are, but we ain't, okay? He came to seek and save those who are lost. And that was me. Hey, listen, I was raised in a good home. Y'all know I've told y'all a whole bunch of times. We didn't lie at our house. Mm, no, sir. The Board of Education was applied to my seat of understanding a whole bunch of times. And I learned you don't steal 
You don't lie. You never talk back. No, boy, we didn't do any of that. You know, it just, and in fact, when my mother died and I had a stepmom, listen, she and I never had a fuss. Never had a time. Why? It was instilled in me. Hey, you don't go down that road. I thank God for that. But dear ones, I was lost. I was in the night of sin. And Jesus came and got to me, and I praise him for it. I give him glory and honor. <laughs> oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. You know, I, I can remember I tried to ride the fence. You know, I tried to be so I could make it with the kids at school or make it okay at the church. You can't do it, y'all. You'll get saddle sore for sure, okay? Riding the fence will kill you. But oh, how wonderful it is. To be a child of the king. To believe him. To rest in him. <laughs> Lord help me. Amen. <laughs> oh, have faith. For it's impossible to please him. For, who, for whoever should draw near to God must believe that he exists. And that he rewards the, those who seek him. Well, not only does he said, don't let your heart be troubled. He said, believe me. He said, in my father's house. Are many mansions. Isn't that wonderful? I, uh, I'd, I'd like to preach to you a lot about heaven, but I want to give you some words from Revelation, okay? Uh, let, me give, let me give you from Hebrews right quick. It says, uh, for this world is not our permanent home, and we're looking forward to a home <laughs> yet to come. And Revelation 21 says, being at verse 1, then I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the old heaven and the old earth had disappeared. And the sea was also gone. Y'all, think of it. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven like a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. I heard a loud shout from the throne saying, Look! God's home is now among his people. He will live with them and they will be his. Y'all, look what God has promised for every one of us. And when I begin to think about, look what he's done. I want to talk to you about the incom incomparable Christ. There's a whole bunch of stuff written on it. So would you bear with me? I want to read. Would you hang on with me? All across the world today, Christians are gathered to worship. They worship Jesus Christ. Why? This great little quote will tell us. More than 1,900 years ago, so this was written back, there was a man born contrary to the laws of life. This man lived in poverty, was reared in obscurity. He did not travel extensively. Only once did he cross the boundaries of his country in which he lived, and that was during his childhood, remember? He possessed neither wealth nor influence. His relatives were inconspicuous and had neither training nor formal education. In infancy, he startled a king. In childhood, he puzzled the doctors. In manhood, he ruled the course of nature. He walked on water. <laughs> And he hushed the sea to sleep. He healed the multitudes without medicine and made no charge for his services. He never wrote a book, and yet perhaps all the libraries of the world could not hold the books that have been written about him. He never wrote a song, and yet he has furnished the theme for more songs than all the songwriters combined. He never founded a college, but all the schools put together could not boast of having as many students. He never marshaled an army. He never drafted a soldier. He never fired a gun. And yet no leader ever had more volunteers who have, under his order, made more rebels stack their arms and surrender without a shot fired. We should all be shouting by now. Hallelujah. What a Savior. Amen. Amen. He never practiced psychiatry, and yet he healed more broken hearts than all the doctors far and near. Once every week, multitudes congregate at worshiping assemblies to pay homage 
and respect to him. The names of the past proud statements of Greece, statesmen of Greece and Rome have come and gone. The names of the past scientists, philosophers, theologians have come and gone. But the name of this man multiplies more and more. And though time has spread oh, nearly 2,000 years between the people of this generation and the mockers of his crucifixion, he still lives. His enemies could not destroy him. The grave could not hold him. He stands forth at the highest pinnacle of heavenly glory, proclaimed of God, acknowledged by angels, adorned by saints, feared by the devil, and is risen personal Christ and the Lord our Savior. And all of us said, Amen. How about praise the Lord? How about hallelujah? What a Savior, y'all. Man, I love us trying to sing about it. Lonnie and I were trying, and Lonnie, when we were trying to sing, I could hear old Ernie Haas singing that high tenor. Get clear up there until it just put thrills all the way through you. Oh, what a Savior. Oh, hallelujah. Bless his name forever. You heard this one, I think. He was one solitary life. He was born in an obscure village, the child of a, of a peasant woman. He grew up in another obscure village where he worked in a carpenter's shop until he was 30. He never wrote a book. He never held an office. He never went to college. He never visited a big city. He never traveled more than 200 miles from the place he was born. He did none of these things, usually associated with greatness and with no credentials but himself. He was only 33 years of age. His friends ran away. One of them denied him. He was turned over to his enemies and went through the mockery of a trial. He was nailed to a cross between two thieves. While dying, his executors gambled for his clothing, the only property he had on earth when he died. He was laid in a borrowed grave through the pity of a friend. Nearly 2,000 years have come and gone, and today, listen to me, Jesus Christ is the central figure of the human race and the leaders of mankind's progress and all the armies that have ever marched, all the navies that have ever sailed, all the parliaments that have ever sat, all the kings that have ever reigned put together have not affected the life of mankind on earth as powerfully as this one solitary life. Hallelujah. What a Savior. What a Savior. Oh, why shouldn't we praise Him? Why shouldn't we shout and glorify His name? Why shouldn't we sing praises? <laughs> I've been reading through the Psalms and Proverbs again. And man, I was thrilled. I said, sing a new song. Give Him praise. Give Him honor. Why? He's the King of kings and Lord of lords. He's the great I Am, the Prince of Peace, the everlasting Father. I love Him, don't you? <laughs> Amen. Listen to this and I'll close to you, okay? He is incomparable. There never was a man born like him. The birth of Isaac was miraculous. The birth of John the Baptist was supernatural. But the birth of Jesus was divine. Never did a man live like him. Joseph was dauntless. Daniel was blameless. And Jesus was sinless. There never did a man speak like him with authority, and with power, with grace, and with wisdom. Never did a man act like him, doing God's will always, doing nothing amiss. He always went about doing good. Help us, Lord. Never did a man love like him, compassionate, inexplicably, sacrificially. Never did a man suffer like him, innocent. Uh, substitutionally, superlative. Never did a man keep silent like him. It was amazing. It was victorious. It was re redemptive. Never did a man die like him, willingly, purposefully, punitively, scripturally. Never did a man rise like him, unaided, spectacularly, triumphantly. Never did a man ascend into heaven like him, visibly, bodily, representatively, expectingly. And he said, I'm coming again. Are you his this morning? 
There is no one like Jesus Christ. Amen. There was never a prince so royal, so worthy of worldwide fame. There was never a friend so loyal, whose love is as great as his name. There was never such springs of sweetness, such rivers of unequaled bliss. There was never such perfect meekness as dwelled in this, that heart of his. What moved his heart with such kindness, expressed by the words of grace, impelled his feet to great mercy, was love the lost ones to save he saved ones well will never his saved ones will never fathom such depth of measureless love that led this blessed man to calvary to suffer god's wrath from above there was never such an ocean of sorrow there was never such floods of grief as overwhelmed my loving savior in order to bring us relief let each one ponder Golgotha. Take a look at the cross where he died and wonder, worship before him. Bless Savior, the crucified. This world will give Jesus all honor. Bow the knee to his wonderful name. The one they despised and rejected, they'll join in proclaiming his name. All heaven and earth will own Jesus. These beneath will join in that day to acknowledge the Savior in lordship, for he holds universal slave. Dear sinner, look to this Savior who purchased salvation by blood, accept of his infinite mercy, and bask in his wonderful love. Do you know him? Is he your Savior? Have you come to that wonderful reality that if you die, you'd go to heaven? Have you got that blessed assurance that Jesus is your... If you don't, come. He wants you to know Him. He's not holding you off. He's saying, come unto me, all you that are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly of spirit. You'll find rest for your soul. Why shouldn't you sell out to Him? Why shouldn't you give yourself to Him? Look what a Savior. Look what a God we have. I love Him, don't you? Can you say it with me? I love Jesus, yes I do. I love Jesus, how about you? So I'm asking the question, are you right with God? If you die today, hmm. None of us know. I mentioned Mike a while ago. Mike's been having a time with his heart again. So y'all pray for him. I've been having a time with my blood pressure. It goes whoo like this, then down like this. But it's going to kill you, Plymouth. Yeah. I'll tell you what I've determined. I'll live until I'll live. I see. I'll live until I die. All right. I'll keep trying. Are you ready? By His grace, I am. Uh, Phyllis, He looked beyond my faults and saw my needs. Now, if you'll get up there, I'd like for you to stand with me. Is there anybody here this morning like for us to pray for you? We'd sure love for you to if you don't know Jesus. All of you that can stand, if you can't, it's okay. We'll make it. He looked beyond my faults and saw my need. If you got your mic, team, help me. Amazing grace will always be my song. For it was grace that taught me liberty. Thank you. Come up, you want to pray? God knows just how He came to love me so. He looked beyond my faults and saw my need. I shall forever lift my eyes to Calvary to view the cross where Jesus died for me. Bless his name. Oh, my 
falling soul. He looked beyond my thoughts and saw my And Lord, we thank you for your wonderful touch, for your presence this morning. We ask your special help. Lord, you know Norma needs your touch with her physical. We thank you, Lord, how you've helped her so many times. And we commit her to you today, Lord. You know, the knee that needs surgery and how she's had a tough time not feeling well, but Lord, you're a great God. <laughs> Hallelujah. We thank you for her. We thank you for Ida that does so much to help us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for Maureen. Thank you, Lord, for Rick. Thank you for everybody who's here this morning. We commit our people to you, Lord. Save us, help us, help us physically, Lord. We need your touch. We ask you to help us all emotionally, but most of all, help us to draw near to your great heart. For you said if we draw near to you, you draw near to us. Help us to respond, Lord. Guide and help us today in the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said, amen. God bless you, bless you. Bless you, Norma. Help Norma back down there a little bit. Thank you all. Let's be sure and shake hands, everybody, before you're out the door, if you would. I'd like it. Thank you.